It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, all I can tell you today, folks, uh, you, you're in for a treat. You're in for a real big treat on The Sam LaSant Show. Uh, I've been trying to get this guy on my show for a while. Uh, he is no stranger to Northeastern Pennsylvania. I, I have the deepest respect for him. Uh, he's just one heck of a guy. Uh, I probably agree with him about 90%, 10% of the time. We, I don't agree with him. However, it's like anything else. It's good uh, discussion. And I'm talking about my very good friend, L.A. Tyrone. Uh, and for those of you who know, L.A. has been around since 19, he tells me 1979, uh, you know, radio, newspaper, television, and now you get listen to him every um, Monday through Friday, right? Uh, six to nine on WILK, um, great radio station. Uh, and he's my guest today. And folks, we're going to talk about a lot of things. You know, uh, I always talk about facts uh, and uh, doing research and just providing information of what we should be doing as the media. Uh, and this guy is nails it. If you get a chance, read his article in the Standard Speaker every Sunday. He just nails it. Well, L.A., thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Sammy. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I admire you because of the fact that you um, really pay attention to what you do. Okay. Well, thank you. I, you almost have to. You know, when you work in this business, uh, your end as well, you have to know what is going on in the world around you. I mean, that's what you're paid to do. That's your main occupation. You know, so. Let me ask you this. Okay, I don't even want to say that, but I ask anyway. Um, what do you do in terms of your research, okay? Um, because when I, when I listen to you and, and I read, you, you know, your articles, I see uh, a lot of details. I see that you, you know, you do throw your opinion in there, oh, which yeah. is fine, okay? What, what do you do? The internet has, has made everything so much easier because, of course, before it meant spending time at the library going through congressional records and things like that that you don't have to do anymore. I don't know that there's really anything special. Um, a lot of the things that I will occasionally make reference to, both on radio and in the uh, columns, are just things that I've picked up over the years, like the little things I know about uh, municipal law and things like that. They're just things that years ago when I was a newspaper reporter, I had to write about. So you sort of had to take a crash course in them and learn them pretty fast, and a lot of them I've never forgotten. Uh, everything else, it's really not much more than just relying on, um, a, in many cases, other news media, what, uh, what the Philadelphia Inquirer may have reported, what AP may be reporting, what Fox News or uh, CNN or somebody is reporting, and take things from that and, and use them either as uh, debate points, discussion points, or something to mention in a column. When you're writing or you're, you're, you're doing a show, um, uh, people have accused me of, of being one-sided. Okay, other people say, Sam, I like your show, because you, you, know, you bring out to me. And I always say, for example, I'm pro-life, mm -hmm. and I say, if, you want, if you're pro-choice, you're welcome to come on this show anytime and tell me why, you know, of course I always throw and tell me why it's okay to pull little arms and legs apart, but that's unfair for me to say that. Um, the thing is, the media, okay, people, like you said, um, you, you look and try to get information. Now, uh, I have to tell you, L.A., on a personal level, uh, I've been in this business since 1984, 1969 really started with uh, uh, the muscular dystrophy telethon and got my taste of WNEP with mm -hmm. um, the, the telethons. But uh, I am very, very uh, disappointed uh, in the media today, and I think we alluded to this yesterday in our conversation. Um, I see what they're doing in the presidential election, okay? And I know that, listen, I have a lot of friends who I like, but that means it doesn't mean anything when I come on this show. I should be able to present other sides. Some people I don't want on my show, okay? Just because I think they're phonies from A to Z, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite. So with that being said, what is your opinion, okay, and the media, the, the national media, the so-called um, mainstream, mainstream. Uh, today in, in the presidential review? I, th I think it's important to draw a distinction between what I do, because I don't consider myself a journalist or a reporter anymore. I used to be years ago when I worked at WAZL, when I worked at the Standard Speaker. I'm not anymore. I go out, I have an opinion, I'll tell you what it is. Um, where I'm very disappointed are the national supposed reporters who are supposed to be unbiased uh, and supposedly just 
you know, bring you what uh, is going on. Of course, there's always some interpretation involved, but I think they have slammed Donald Trump. Uh, I think he has received the most unfair press coverage of any candidate I remember. I mean, come on, Sammy, you think of some of the little incidents, the minor little things that would, wouldn't have even gotten reported. The baby cry, remember that? Three days they made stories out of this. I mean, you had panels on CNN discussing whether or not Donald Trump likes children or not. I mean, it, it's, it's patently ridiculous. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I guess, has done the smart thing in that she's kind of hidden out and hasn't said all that much. But I mean, you're talking about a woman where it appears that she held a for sale sign out in front of the uh, United States State Department. And if you donate to the Clinton campaign, the uh, Clinton Foundation, that'll give you access to the State Department. There are a lot of things about that that have not yet been reported. Julian Assange just dumped another uh, set of damning emails the other day. It was a Friday dump, by the way. The Friday before Labor Day isn't that nice. So it didn't get anywhere near the attention that it did. But I haven't seen in-depth stories of what is in some of those emails. When you find those things, they're on the secondary and tertiary sites. They're on, uh, you know, the Daily Caller and things like that. They're not where I think they should be, which is CBS, CNN, you know, your major mainstream media. The, 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 the most in-depth story that was very damning was the one that AP did a couple of weeks ago. And... I'm kind of surprised that the rest of the mainstream media paid it only scant attention. But, you know, Trump insults somebody or has an argument with somebody and we hear about it for three or four days. I mean, it, been in this business a long time. Very often I'm one of one or two Republicans in a newsroom. There's no way getting around it. And the most recent study I saw was in 1992. 92% 92 of reporters are Democrats like 6% of Republicans and, and there are 2% independents. So whether they do it openly or not, their hearts are going to be with the Democrats. Republicans always have a little bit more to go through. And hey, that's OK. Why, why that's is that? No. I don't know. I don't know why this business tends to draw so much from one side of the political aisle than the other. Now, it does. When, when you look at, you know, when, when you join a club, there's a, there's a mission statement that a club has. You join the Lions, you join Rotary, you join right. any club that you join, uh, the Elks, etc. There is, there's rules and regulations and a mission statement. And you read that statement and you say, okay, I, I like that and I join that club. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, my mother was 87 years old. One of the old staunch Democrats. Okay, you know, the Kennedy, that, and that's when, and when she saw what was going on with the plat and what the, the Democrats were doing, in terms of their abortion, in terms of no morality, in terms of everything that's wrong, okay, she switched to be a Republican at 87. Uh -huh. I mean, more so than her son, who I was the hypocrite because I'm really talking about things that are, you know, I should have. But the point is, when you talk about the plan, does that mean anything in terms of your, you know, of, of what you believe in? The platform? Yeah. It, it does as a sort of uh, PR mission. This is our stated set of beliefs, but it doesn't bind any candidate to the specific planks in it. And very often the platforms are pretty much ignored. Uh, and uh, for example, I don't think you're seeing either the Republican or the Democratic Party pay a great deal of attention to the planks that were in the platform that they adopted at their conventions just a month, a month and a half ago. They're sort of show for PR, but they don't bind any candidate to them or anything. Okay, so, but, okay, so when you look at that, and, and I can, because I, for example, I have the greatest respect for Senator John Udichak, mm -hmm. okay? I think he's doing a great job. I'd love to see him be a mayor, uh, governor sometimes. He's a Democrat. He may take a stab at it, yeah. and I think he would be a pretty attractive uh, candidate. There's in no question. I, I think the guy is, is just a, a good person, yeah. okay? Um, but when you look at, for example, the, the presidential candidates, when they, where they stand, you look at Hillary, who has said, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to put the coal industry out of business. Yes, she did. Okay. She's backed away from that now, and she's tried to pretend that she didn't say it, and she would like a redo, but she said that shortly before the West Virginia primary, and there's still a lot of coal mining in West Virginia. Oops, yeah. bad timing. Yeah. <laughs> you look at, for example, the, uh, the, the paper in Dallas, I mean in Texas, that just endorsed Hillary, uh, that has always endorsed. Yes. And then you look behind the scenes as to the oil business and what Hillary has been getting in terms of that. What's your take on that? 
Well, that newspaper editorial, first of all, I don't know newspaper editorials really mean much, and I think they mean less today than they did 20 years ago, and they may not have meant that much 20 years ago. Um, from the PR standpoint that Republicans lost, um, a, a, a cheerleader they always had, I guess it means something. I don't really think that it means that much, though, in the long run. Um, it's kind of interesting. You know, Trump is an unusual candidate. He's not a normal Republican. He's not as conservative, uh, particularly on social issues, that uh, Republicans usually are. Um, he has a much less interventionist foreign policy, which I'm all in favor of. I mean, there used to be a wing of the Republican Party that many, many years ago was headed up by the late Senator Bob Taft from Ohio that was, we're going to fight our own battles and otherwise stay out of things. Now, that was jettisoned many years ago. Trump isn't quite that far, but a lot of these little skirmishes that Obama and Bush, for that matter, have gotten us in in the Middle East, I can't see Donald Trump have getting us in. And I think that... Uh, he, it's funny, they're running, he's the guy to be afraid of on the bullet, don't let him push the button and all that stuff. I think he would be the least likely to start another conflict any place. In fact, if Hillary Clinton wins, I suspect we're going to be in another conflict in the Middle East somewhere within a year. She'll start another war, for lack of a better term, more like a conflict within a year because she's kind of trigger happy and she likes that. Her, her brand of diplomacy proved that with the Arab Spring where she toppled three American allies. You've been on top of this uh, every day. You, you know, you're looking at all different areas. What, what about the email scandal that's going on? What's your opinion it's on that? It's a very big deal. That is a very, very big deal, I think. Uh, again, For the general person out there that really doesn't understand, you know, all right, big deal. Yeah. Why is it such a major problem? It's a major problem because it appears that um, the, as Secretary of State, she allowed American interests to be hacked and interfered with by foreign, uh, foreign powers, um, quite possibly some uh, enemies of the United States, and made America's secrets classified material uh, that pretends to the national security readily stealable, for lack of a better term. And I think that's very careless and a very big deal. Uh, it's a violation of several different laws. I mean, you know, I don't think that even if you get a conviction, you're talking a long jail term or anything like that. But uh, it's a big deal because you're talking about American security and her cavalier attitude with it. So here we have the United States uh, citizens uh, hoping and praying that we have rules and laws that will be obeyed, okay? Um, but yet, we see, according to Judge Neapolitan, uh, Neapolitano from yeah. uh, yesterday, uh, I heard him indicating that where this was a, a, a very bad decision on the FBI um, Comey spot, yes. a very, very serious, and that there's many, and let me tell you, I wouldn't want to be an FBI agent. They are fabulous people. They work hard. Their families have to be applauded because you never know what they're involved with. But when you have that, now this is what he said, not mm -hmm. me. He said it was a total disgrace and there are many people that are very upset about that in the, in, in the Justice Department. Now, put that here. Going back to Clinton's visit with Lynch, okay, where they happened to meet, you know, in the plane right before the decisions right. made. I mean, right. so, uh, now to me, you know, L.A., I don't know if they talked about, maybe they talked about their grandchildren. They talked about grandchildren and yeah. travel so is I what think, they claimed. I, I mean, what's your opinion on before I tell you? Before I tell well, you I, first of all, that, that, that meeting, even if it was a chance meeting, was to be avoided at all costs because if nothing else, it at least gave the appearance of impropriety. And somebody on one staff or another should have had the good sense to say, wait a minute, this doesn't look good. Let's, you know, if you want to send an email saying, hi, how are you? But don't go any farther than that. Uh, and, and nobody had the sense to do that. And it just looked very bad that you had the Attorney General of the United States who ostensibly was uh, potentially involved in an investigation of uh, the husband or the wife who's a, a candidate of, uh, for the President of the United States because it was with Bill Clinton. And uh, it just looked very bad. Um, it looked... You know, I mean, you heard uh, some comics having a good time with it that uh, Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton, 
read Loretta Lynch, the uh, riot act. Now you better not do this or blah, 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 blah. I don't know what happened. What's Nobody your gut ever opinion? really. What is your gut opinion? That Clinton said, you better not do this, Loretta, because because she professional doom is yours yeah, if, yeah. You, if you touch yeah. it. Yes. Well, and I think, the, however, here again, okay, if this was reversed, and if it was a, if it was a Republican doing yes. that, okay, uh, you'd have the New York Times, I you'd have so. CNN, MSNBC, yes. who practically have said, "I'm we're endorsing any way we could destroy." The New York Times did. Oh, yeah, um, an amazing column that I read on the air, highlighting some of the lines in it that were astounding. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, written by a guy named Jim Rutenberg. Is he still working there? He is still working there. <laughs> he is he's uh, you know a, a mid level editor. I guess three or four Sundays ago, he wrote a column that said, Donald Trump is so bad, we have given up objectivity and we are out to defeat him. I posted the column on the WILK Facebook page. I read it over and over again. I continue to refer to it. It was an amazing column. I've never seen anything like it before. I mean, whether the New York Times actually is unbiased is a matter of opinion. I frankly don't think it has been. No, no. But this, this just picked any and any facade of unbiased off and threw it in a trash can and said, we're out to get Trump. That's all there is to so it, it. And that's our mission. Is that what the American public deserves? No. I, I no. mean, is that what we, uh, you know, especially seniors who these guys are like vultures. I mean, yeah. I'm seeing some of these ads uh, it, with, with Toomey and, and McKinty and, 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 and Trump and, you know, where they're characterizing Trump as the B. He hates disabled people, right. you know, and all this other kind of stuff. And, and I mean, she's, 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 she's groping as much as yeah. she can now. Right. I think, you know, whatever she can do this. OK, but the American people out there, uh, you really think they're stupid folks. I'm talking L.A. to Rome. I told you it would be a great show. Um, remember, folks, I t said to you, if you have any comments, on, we're on the road to the 2016 election, uh, the series where we're talking about different things. Um, folks, these are facts, and sometimes facts are ugly things. We'll be back with L.A. right after this message. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show. Remember, folks, 24-7, you watch all of our programs that we produce here in Northeastern Pennsylvania on ssptv.com. My email is sam at ssptv.com. And now for folks in the greater Hazleton area on Service Electric Cable Vision, you know we're on Channel 13 and our HD Channel 513. In the greater Pottsville area, we're on Comcast 190 from 7 o'clock, uh, Monday through Friday to 12, and all day Saturday and Sundays. Uh, we're on the Wilkesbury system, uh, Service Electric Cable Communications, every Saturday and Sunday evening. Uh, from 7 to 11 and then and now in the Lackawanna County every Sunday and uh, every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 to 12 on channel 190 channel 92 in the Wilkesbury area so um, your friends could if you live in those areas could watch the show or go on our website uh, my f guest today is L.A. Tyrone no stranger to anyone in northeastern Pennsylvania L.A. has been around since 1979 radio announcer TV uh, paper and now he is uh, has his own talk show which is a highly rated show on WILK 6 to 9 Monday uh, excuse, is it 69 yeah 6 yeah. to 9 Monday through Friday uh, on WILK um, getting back to our discussion on the fact that the people you know um, people pick up a paper and they read it they they'll watch television uh, I don't know how blatant uh, MSNBC or CNN could become to really th throw it in. I mean, like, and when you look at the ratings, they're going down the tube. CNN really took a huge drop because um, it had been it, in the first Democrat debate and the Republican debates, it had led everybody in ratings. And <laughs> since then, it, is, it has fallen a lot. Why See, is that? Uh, well, I think people get very tired of the constant. Uh, slant. CNN is the one that I find the most disappointing because uh, a lot of people who are on the right love to watch Fox News a lot. I am on the right and I'm not a big fan of Fox and I've always kind of gravitated to CNN because several years ago they made the effort to try to get back to the center and I thought largely that they had been doing that until the last few months where especially the night shows which are their best shows anderson cooper 360 and don lemon tonight 
it's constant anti-Trump barrage after barrage after barrage. Now, Cooper especially will touch other things, and he has been pretty rough on Hillary Clinton and the email scandal and, and the Clinton Foundation. But it's just become a, a nonstop barrage. MSNBC has always been way far to the left of center. That's what you're going to get from this. Like Fox is very far to the right of center on the talk shows. I don't think the news coverage is, but the talk show is. MSNBC is kind of the counterbalance to that. That's fine. CNN used to be in the middle. It hasn't been the last few months, and that's the one I find the most disappointing. Why do you think, why do you think they, they hate Trump so much? Don't know. Don't know. I mean, you can give the, the uh, explanation that uh, a lot of his ardent supporters, those inside of his camp, is, well, they know nobody's going to control him. That may or may not be the case. Uh, Trump is kind of blustery. He has broken the mold uh, of politicians in so many different ways that he didn't, you know, run for Congress and work his way up. He went right for the presidency. Nobody ever does that. Uh, he did that with very little organization. Um, he won the primary, the Republican primary, convincingly, with very little ground game. He broke up a lot of different conventions. I don't know that that alone should engender what seems to be such hatred for him from so many people in the media, though. I don't know. To me, it's kind of a, a, a difficult thing to explain. Did you read the article of Bob Bennett? No. Bob Bennett, uh, and, and I would ask you to Google this, folks, um, uh, and this is Bob Bennett. Um, where he mentioned in the article where there are billions of dollars at stake here. And he actually feared for Trump's life, okay, because he said that what they are so afraid of, the Soros's and the people who are, mm -hmm. you know, who really control everything, from what I understand, I don't know this for a fact, but I, what I understand, um, that it, it, and it was very scary when you read that article, and this is something that you didn't hear because the, when you look at a liberal press, okay, my question is why? I mean, they say he's racist. I don't think Trump is Not racist. At all. They it, say it, he's anti-gay. I don't think by no means is he, I mean, uh, wh who's supporting him? His billionaire friend who was, who was gay. Yeah. So, but they try to, so there has to be something else, L.A., that's there that they are really, really worried if Trump gets in. What, what, do you, what is your opinion? I, on? And, and, you know, again, we're back to what the <laughs> campaign itself is saying, the cutoff of access for uh, the, the end of business, the old way, the uh, lack of uh, contact with uh, lobbyists that uh, he says he will end. Uh, I, I, I get, maybe that's it. I don't know. I mean, you mentioned George Soros, who to me is one of the most despicable people in the history of mankind, because here's a guy who came to the United States from behind the Iron Curtain when it was standing and has made billions of dollars in American-style capitalism and now uses it to promote the very socialism that he ran away from. Uh, and he has funded so many of the uh, Black Lives Matter group and the protest groups in Ferguson and Baltimore. and so I mean, If you get a chance, Sammy, you look at any of the news photos that are taken from any of those, Many of them you'll see either carrying signs or wearing t-shirts with email addresses on them. Web addresses, go to them. Look at what you found. Because I have done that. Freeze, frozen some of the I pictures and looked at, okay, let's look this up and look what you come up with. I mean, these are old fashioned communist organizations. One of them, when you pull it up, there's a big drawing of Che Guevara, Castro's assassin during the days of the revolution is this particular website's big hero. They all promote the very communism and socialism that Soros ran away from. And his uh, society for an open, uh, what is it, uh, people for an open society or whatever, is very open about the fact that it does indeed fund these groups. L.A., do you think that uh, Obama has strings and that Soros is, is, is really running him like a puppet? I, I, I don't. As much as I don't like our president, I, I wouldn't go that far. No, I, I just think that in many ways... You think that they, the president has to answer to these people who are, you know, so-called... Um, no, I, I don't think, no more so than any other president, president. has had to answer to I'm his glad, I'm donors glad to hear that. next I'm, time I'm really glad to hear that because I would, 
I would, it would break my heart, okay? All right, now we got, uh, this is part one, folks. I'm not letting him go. This is part one of the Sam LaSanne show with L.A. Tyrone. Remember I said, folks, he, um, he uh, deals with facts. But before, I, I want to I talk about, you know, are we better off, where we're going, etc. And I want also your opinion on, on the media like Fox, etc. Folks, um, Ben Franklin, if you remember Ben Franklin, before he ever had to make any decision, we use it in sales all the time. It's called the Ben Franklin close. Are you familiar with that, L.A.? No. Okay. Ben Franklin used to get it. When he had a decision to make, he'd make a, an X and then he'd put a, a line to it. And then he would put pro and he would put con. Yeah. And whatever the, the subject matter was, he would have to think about, okay, let me think about everything that is pro about this decision I have to make. And he would list everything, exhaust everything. He went on the con side and he would list everything he possibly could. Now, remember, there's good and bad on both sides. The decision was very easily made for him. All he had to do was count on each side. And if one side had 20 and another side had 22, the decision was made for him. We have a country now with an election, okay? I ask you to do that with all the candidates. But first, research them first. Listen to guys like L.A. Tyrone, okay, uh, that on their talk shows. And they give you information because they do their homework if you don't have the time to do that. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is part one of the Sam LoSancho L.A. Tyrone. Remember, Comcast 190, Pottsville, 92 in Wilkesbury, Kingston, Pittston, 190 in the Lackawanna area. I love to have those Scranton people on right now, uh, getting a lot of feedback from them. Uh, and also, uh, Greater Hazelton Harris Service Electric Cable Vision, two channels, 13 and 513. See you next time.